Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Athens, Greece, here in Europe. And today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Europe. And yes, I realize Europe is a humongous place, and it's really hard to have one kind of set list of don'ts when going to such a various, various diverse place like Europe. And that's why the first don't I have for you is, when you come to Europe, realize, don't think Europe is one homogenous place. If you compare Portugal and Poland, or France and Finland, you have completely different cultures, completely different languages, completely different foods, all kinds of stuff like that. So don't think, oh, I went to London, I saw Europe. That's like saying you went to New York and you saw the US, or you went to Beijing and you saw Asia. It is not that way. Europe is got, it's just chock full of cool countries, cool cities, cool cultures, cool museums, all kinds of amazing stuff for tourists to visit and to explore in all these different cultures and all these different regions. So wherever you're going, realize that having a vacation in Greece is gonna be completely different than having a vacation in Norway. Yes, there's beautiful museums and beautiful nature in both of them, but they're very different nature and very different cultures. So do take that in there. So just remember that. Don't think Europe is one homogenous place. Yes, some things are similar. Yes, you do have some similar fashion among the youths because H&M and Czar and Stradivarius and things like that are all over the place. But just know, you do have distinct cultures and distinct differences. And that's why we have so many don'ts videos for the different countries. If you're going to Greece, we have don't videos for that. Don'ts for Germany, don'ts for Spain, don't for Portugal. Because there are so many differences that you can't have just one list of don'ts. So that's why this list of don'ts we do have is kind of general overall things. And we'll try to like make some examples for the different countries that might fit into just to get you better prepared for it. So another don't of Europe is don't pack everything and the kitchen sink. Make it easy on yourself and just pack what you absolutely need because going to the pharmacy or going to the grocery store or going shopping for clothes or shoes is part of that cultural experience and that's why you're here. That's why you're exploring this great, amazing place. If you have prescription medicines, obviously those are things that you should bring along with you and maybe if you're going on a really long trip, you need to get extra or get a doctor's note or something like that to bring with you. But in general, if if you need Tylenol or ibuprofen or something, go to the pharmacy, you can get it here. Don't worry about those kinds of things. Just do it where you are. Also, I'm a big advocate for packing light. The less stuff you have, the more nimble you are getting around in little tiny places. You make yourself less of a target for pickpockets and things like that. It just and you have like some space restrictions sometimes on smaller airplanes if you're doing like hopping sort of things or on trains, especially metros. Good Lord, you don't want to get on a metro with a suitcase that looks like a trunk. So anyway, just kind of keep those things in mind. You don't have to bring everything in one or two suitcases. You can bring something small and get things as you need when you're here. And believe me, that's her favorite thing when we come here is shopping, okay? <laughs> so she comes with like two pairs of underwear and like two dresses and she goes home with a full suitcase. <laughs> but it's nice because she only does it here, so it's, it's cool. <laughs> so this may sound stupid to some people, but I think it should be said. Europe is not a museum. It is a living, thriving continent full of incredible culture. It's not just going to museums and seeing things and it's not just eating, although we do like to do that. There's so much more and getting into the places and like experiencing dinner with locals or just hanging out with and having a beer with somebody. There's so much more to these cultures than what's on the surface. You know, those tourist spots standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, it's lovely, but um, meeting someone, bumping into someone somewhere, you know, in Montmartre and grabbing some bread and cheese and a bottle of wine and sitting down together, that's, that's why you do this. To make friends, to experience what life really is. It's not just about the museums and the art and those things, although I certainly love those. The people, that's what makes it rich. So now we're here in Ireland. This is actually in Kinsale, Ireland for our next don't of traveling Europe. And that is don't be scared to explore Europe. The thing is, is a lot of time when people travel, they only wanna see like Paris and Rome and that's it. No, go out and explore more. Yes, Dublin is very cool and it's beautiful. You should check it out, but go out and explore not just the big cities, but go explore the smaller towns and villages around Europe because you can see beautiful places like here in Kinsale. I mean, we had some of the best food we've had in Ireland in a little tiny village on the water. 
don't be worried about it because there's so much to gather when you do explore these countries. And the thing is, in the big cities, it's like in the big city in any country, you have the same kind of things everywhere you go. Whereas the small villages and the smaller towns and the smaller cities, you get a better chance of meeting the people, learning the culture, getting authentic food and things like that. So don't be scared to explore so you can actually experience a lot more of Europe. And what's cool with that kind of exploring Europe is the public transportation here is very easy to use. And that goes into our next don't. And our next don't is don't skip out on using public transportation. Look, Europe has done a fantastic job, whether from Bulgaria to Berlin to, you know, Lisbon or wherever, there's great buses, trains, subways, metros, whatever, to get you around town, to get you to all the different places, from the sites to getting to work to getting to shopping. It's really easy to use. But the thing is, if you don't grow up with using public transport, sometimes it can be a little scary. And that's why I say, is, look, take the time to figure out the public transport when you come to Europe, because it can get you everywhere you want to go. And the thing is, if you take taxis and Uber everywhere, one, it's significantly more expensive taking taxis and Uber than it is taking public transportation. But sometimes, like if you're in a place like, you know, Paris, you'd be stuck in traffic forever. Taking that metro to go places will speed things up so much and give you a much more authentic experience of going there because you see the real people going to work, coming to school and all these kind of things. And it is really nice. So don't skip out on the public transport. And some people freak out when they are on public transport. Some will say this, don't freak out when you come to Europe. Look, I know I talk a lot about pickpockets and bag thieves and stuff like that in Barcelona or at the Metro near Coliseum. Yes, these things happen. They happen all over the world. And what you need to know is Europe is extremely safe, okay? And so you're gonna be okay when you come here. Now, having said that, of course you have to pay attention. You know, if you're in Barcelona and you're gonna be going around, there are a lot of pickpockets there. And in Rome, there are pickpockets there, but it's not just in the big cities. That's anywhere you go, you need to pay attention. But the thing is, you don't need to be overly freaked out. Just be a good tourist and pay attention to your surroundings and don't make yourself a target and you'll be okay because Europe is extremely safe. Now, next one I have to do talk to you about is about money. Don't forget to get a PIN number for your credit card and your debit card when you're gonna to come to Europe. Because some places, not every place, but some places do require to use a PIN number to pay and things like that. And if you're going to Scandinavia, they prefer cards. I mean, we were at a bar and they said, sorry, we don't take cash. I'm like, what? We don't take cash, only car. I'm like, all right. And I needed a PIN number to pay. So definitely have that. It's not everywhere, but it is helpful. Another thing with the money side of it, don't forget to carry some cash though, because some places still don't take cards. So you might need to pay for smaller things, you know, with money and, and don't use big bills. They really don't like big bills in Europe. They like people to pay with smaller bills. Now, if you're in the UK or Germany, paying a five euro thing with a 50 euro bill, no one's gonna mind, but if you're here, you know, if you're going to Portugal and you're trying to pay something five years with a, even a 20, people are like, do you have anything smaller? So do try to have smaller bills there. Don't, don't, don't bring the big bills, okay? And a kind of another thing with that is, occasionally, you, you might see this, but don't be surprised if you have to pay to pee in like a bus station or a train station, or maybe sometimes even in, in like restaurants in some countries. The thing is, is that's not everywhere. And it's getting less and less, but it does happen. But the thing is, those places where you pay, you're paying for the cleaning people to clean up the toilets. So those are usually the nice clean ones you actually wanna go and sit down on, not the ones that you wanna figure out is how can I do a three point stance from five meters away, okay? So you do have that. Now, my next don't is for my American travelers. I know in the US, you, service is all about treating the, the customer like kings and they're gonna fall over themselves to help you. That over the top of service, don't expect over the top service when you come to Europe. There's different levels of service throughout Europe. The way I kind of look at it is it's more, people don't see it as like your customer is king, okay? What they see more is this is my job. I do my job professionally and that's the way it is. So it does take longer to get served. It takes longer to get your food, things like that, longer to get your bill. And that's okay, but you should know, don't get in a hurry and don't get upset when you don't get, you know, servers trying to kiss your butt because most of the time you're not tipping anyway. So that's not what they're living off of. They're living off their wages. So it is a different setup. So don't be surprised with that. Another don't I have for you, this is what I've had with some of the tour groups I've taken on is, don't think your plugs in the US will work here in Europe. They have different plugs here. You can have the Continental two prong plugs, or you might have the ones here in the UK, which are like three flat things going on there. Look, make sure you bring an adapter for the countries you're gonna go to so you can plug your stuff in, okay? Yeah, the thing is, is your phones and your computers, they have the converters already on there, so you're just changing the US 
you know, slight, you know, things like this into the European ones. If you've got like a hair dryer or something like that, that's gonna blow the fuse no matter what. So make sure you're smart about those things because having a good converter does make a difference and you can charge multiple things. That's why when I come, I have actually a, like a travel converter that has a plug and USB ports so I can charge everything. And I only need one different thing to change the US version to the European one to plug it in the wall. So that's something to think about. So now we're here in Barcelona and I think it's important to kind of add on from that is also realize that don't think you can always pay with cash. I was in London recently and a lot of places did not accept cash at all. I've been at airports and they're like, no, no cash at all. And so when you're going around Europe, you know, you're, I mean, we have the cash is king mantra, but now how things have gone the last few years, the cashless, the tap and go thing is a lot more popular. If you go to Sweden, you might show up in bars or like, no, no cash tap and go only, okay, or credit card only. So make sure if you're gonna be traveling Europe, you do have a card that works here. So MasterCard, Visa card, and make sure it has that little Wi-Fi signal on there so you can tap and go, cause it'll make your life a lot easier. And whether you're here in Barcelona or you're in Greece or you're in Germany, another don't I have for you is don't forget to learn a few words before you come. Because seriously, just a, a gracias or danke or merci, a thank you will go a long way with people, okay? Especially if you're going to smaller country, going to like Lithuania and you know that achu means thank you. They're like, you do achu meant thank you? Oh, cool. And people are a little bit nicer. Look, not everyone expects you to speak every single language in the world but they do appreciate if you know some, you know, some basic words, it goes a long way. So make sure you always know the pleases and the thank yous and the yeses and the noes, that goes a long way. And also good, good's always special nice, especially when you're looking at food and you go, good, they like that. Now, whether you're using the local language or it's just speaking the English, my next stone for you is don't be loud on public transportation. Look, I know when you get excited and you travel, your voice gets up and you get excited and you get talking louder and louder, you need to bring it down. A lot of places throughout Europe, you, you, like the subway becomes like a quiet zone. Public transportation on the train becomes a quiet zone, okay? So remember that, so don't get a little overzealous with your communication when you're on public transportation. Also, don't raise your voice and just speak English louder thinking that people would understand you. It doesn't work that way. Just because you speak louder doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, the English part of my brain works now. No. And another thing I think is important to remember when you're coming to Europe is, don't forget about the regionality of Europe because yes, people are Germans, but they're really Bavarians. Yes, we're in Spain, but here in Barcelona, it's Catalonia, we are Catalans. And you see a lot of regional pride, city pride throughout Europe. And that's what I always recommend. When you're going to a small town or a, a region, go find the regional museum. Go find the Museum of Catalonia. Go find the, the, the Alsace Regional Museum, Folk Museum. In Austria, you go there, the, the Triolian you know, Folk Museum in, in Innsbruck. Like the regional stuff here, those regional museums, that pride really comes out. And that's why sometimes you might get a weird look. We say, oh, you're Spanish. Like, uh, I'm Catalan. Oh, you're German. Uh, I'm from Bayern, from Bavaria. And so you have that, so just be aware of it. So now we're here in Dublin, Ireland. That's St. Patrick's Cathedral behind me. And our next don't for Europe we have for you is don't get discouraged. When I say that is when you're traveling in Europe or you're traveling anywhere, really, you might have this idea of what a city is going to be like. Oh, Dublin's going to be this great thing with these pubs and friendly people and stuff like this. And yes, it is. But then sometimes you'll see a bad side of a city. I mean, I know people, I mean, I love Paris and I'll go to Paris like at a drop of a hat. And I'd move there today. But the thing is, I know some people go, they're like, oh, I expected so much more. And they were so disappointed by it, it made them not want to travel more. Don't get that way. Just because the city you were dreaming about doesn't live up to your dreams, doesn't mean you're not going to find a place that goes beyond your expectations. So maybe Dublin is a disappointment, but then you go to someplace like Kilkenny or, or Waterford or, or Kinsale, and you're like, wow, these beautiful small Irish towns are so gorgeous and such friendly people and great food and, and all these things. It's such a great surprise. So don't get discouraged if some town you go to doesn't live up to those expectations. And that's why I always say is do a lot of research before you travel, because a lot of the guidebooks only tell you the good stuff. They don't tell you the bad stuff or the things you should be prepared for, for when you go. And that's what we try to do in our videos, all right? So here we are in London for a little more of our don'ts on Europe. Now, when you are traveling around trying to visit as much of Europe as you can, you're gonna find a lot of cheap airlines. You know, the Ryanair's and EasyJets and Vuelings, they're awesome, they're super helpful to get you where you wanna go. But my don't for that is, don't think that the cheap airlines are always your best bet to travel. I'm saying this because yes, you can get a really cheap flight, but then you gotta pay for your luggage, and then you gotta fight to get a seat, 
And then sometimes the airports they fly into aren't the main airports. So then you got to take a longer bus ride in. Or if you're getting like, you have to fly out on a Sunday here in London, for example, and you use a Ryanair or an EasyJet, it's going to be really expensive for you to get out to those airports at those wee early hours or wee late hours. So don't think that the cheap airlines are going to be the cheapest overall price. Make sure you are checking the options. I know for me, when I used to live in Lithuania, I would check Ryanair and then I look at British Airways because in British Airways, it was more expensive, but I would get in at 10 o'clock in the morning versus you know, two o'clock in the morning. So it was like, wait, I don't have to pay for a taxi. I could get in a normal hour. It didn't make it a lot safer and a lot cheaper, like overall for pricing. So just, just check that out. Sometimes the easy jets are great and it's perfectly fine, but do leave your options open when you're looking for those. Another don't I have for you when you're coming here to Europe is don't think that all your stereotypes and all the food stereotypes and people stereotypes, all the things you've learned throughout your life and you've seen in the movies and stuff like that, don't think they're all going to come true. I know a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to go to Italy and meet the most romantic man ever, and he's going to feed me spaghetti and meatballs and stuff like that. Well, first off, he might feed you spaghetti, and he might feed you meatballs, but not together, okay? Uh, but you'd be like, oh, my, my dream, my, my dream of Paris was shattered because it wasn't as romantic as I thought it would be, and, and Italy wasn't as crazy as I thought it would be, and England wasn't as British, and I see a lot of people get kind of disappointed by that. Don't let that disappoint you. Realize Europe is all these cultures, all these people. It's a really great place to be. And don't let kind of your, your, your preconceptions ruin your experience when you're here. Go and enjoy. Enjoy the culture. Learn more about it because you might find out that, you know what? What my stereotype thought before I came here is totally different than what I had. And I love this version of Europe so much better. So I hope that helps you know a bit more of what you don't do when you come here to Europe. If you want to learn more, maybe the don'ts to come into the U.S. or don'ts to go into different countries around the world, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest. And we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. And if you like videos like this, hit, hit like this, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll get videos of your feed every Wednesday and Saturday. So we'll say bye from here in London.